Outlook Podcast. Who are you at the Outlook Podcast? Yeah. Just as good as we're here, we're talking to cool people. Hey guys, welcome back to the Outlook Industries podcast. I'm joined today by Matt. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for taking some time out to uh, sit down and talk to me today. I really appreciate it. And I'm excited to uh, talk about your story and everything else that you have going on. So uh, first, kind of to start off, how old are you? Where are you from? And uh, yeah, just kind of like what you do. Gotcha. Well, yeah, definitely. Thank you for having me. Stoked to to do this for sure. Um, my name is Matt Etzel. Currently living in Las Vegas, uh, but I've kind of lived a little bit all over. Um, Nineteen years old. Turned nice. twenty in April. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, and what what do you do? What do you who who are you, Matt? <laughs> Who am I? Oh shoot, we're starting starting off strong. Um, exactly. Who am I? You were originally like, were you a skater, scooter rider? So yeah, first kind of got into action sports when I was like super young, probably first second grade. Picked up skateboarding. Right. Um, didn't really stick with it for too long because. I think I ended up just like losing my helmet or something and I just yeah. like quit or I don't even know, but, uh, I was kind of pressured into team sports. So I kind of spent a lot of time, you know, doing the rotations of soccer, basketball, football, things like that. Yeah. Um, up until I think middle school is when I got back into the skate park and sort of messed around with scootering. Thanks to actually my younger brother for my younger brother, Sam, he, I think he came across like the funk bros, Capron and Corey. Yeah. On YouTube and like Tanner Fox and everything back in like 2016. Right. And he was just like, yo, we should get into scootering and all that. And, you know, I was like, honestly, I'm down because I'm just sort of getting sick of team sports, you know, having coaches and all this other stuff, this mandatory games and practices. Like I'd be super down just to do a skate park sport that you can do on your own time, whenever you want, push yourself as hard as you want to go. Um, which is one of the things I love, you know, about action sports is you have that freedom unlike any other sport. Yeah. I, that's exactly the same for me. I did the same exact thing. Like I did all the team sports I was in, I was big in baseball, big in soccer, and then just kind of got tired of the team thing and like having to go to practice when somebody else told me to. So I ended up picking up like mountain biking and skateboarding and all that stuff and then slowly transitioned over into scootering and stuff. But you kind of piddle around with everything, don't you? Uh, A little bit. Yeah. So I definitely spent, so start kind of started up in 2016 and spent a good like two, three years just kind of focusing on scootering. Right. Um, my brother and I, we like researched every, we tried to find out as much as we could about just the industry and scootering and things. And like, cause we had to, we bought our first scooter that we had to share actually. Um, so just trying to like figure all that out. And I remember we couldn't get, it was a lucky prospect complete. Right. Whatever one the 2016 one was or something like that. That's what we started out on. Yeah. No, Lucky Crew, my bad. Kind of the same thing. Yeah. And then from there, I eventually got my own. I got the Prospect later on. Um, Those are nice. And that's what we did for like, yeah, for like three years. And then I kind of wanted to get into skateboarding too a little bit, just because that's what I first started doing. Um, And I just wanted to like be diverse you know i would see other right. guys who could like ride multiple um i don't know what am I, disciplines I'm like things yeah multiple yeah. disciplines and just be able to like shred anything that they're given whether it's a bike skateboard scooter and i was like you know that's what i'm trying to be right that'd be so sick yeah so then i got really into skateboarding and I kind of love them like pretty evenly skateboarding and scootering for sure. I think maybe scootering just like a little bit more. Right. But um, 
Then I got a little bit into BMX as well. Never got my own bike though. Yeah, uh, I got gotcha. I was like debating on whether, and that's just because BMX is the most expensive out of any other skate park sport. I so, have the same thing. You know, the only reason I ended up with a yeah. bike is I worked at a bike store and got like wholesale price on it. That that's was the sick. only reason I ended up getting a, a BMX bike, but yeah, no, it's yeah, that's something I always wanted to do was work at a bike shop. Yeah. yeah. I That's worked sick. at a department store called Shields and they had like a bike department and then I like really helped out in that area. So I basically just worked at a bike shop. Um there you go. But it was sick. And then like Yeah. When did you end up going to Woodward? So let's see. It was the summer of 2021 or so just last summer. Uh right. I was living in uh, Aurora, Colorado, actually, at the time, because that's where I spent like eight years was in Colorado and Aurora. Right. And then yeah. kind of moved. Uh, yeah. Then I moved to Vegas uh, as like a junior in high school and then COVID hit. So I ended up just graduating early and moving back out to Aurora. And I just lived with some friends in their apartment. Um, actually, I slept on their floor for like <laughs> that whole summer, pretty much. And at this point, like. I didn't have a job. I was like living off of money that I saved up from like other jobs that I've worked. Um, right. And I had a friend, his name is CJ, uh, luscious locks on Instagram. I can't remember. Yeah. His last name, but, um, CJ's the man, you know him? Yeah. I know Dude, CJ. He's so sick. I yeah. I, I the... met him at the Denver. Yeah. I, I, uh, I met him at the Denver last... street jam jam. This last yeah. year. That's sick. So, so, yeah, I met him at the Denver Street Jam. We just kind of kept in touch. And he was, I think he was working at Tahoe at the time, Woodward Tahoe, and was like, you know, trying to see if I'd be interested in going up there or anything like that. So he had me just apply to some different things. And I wasn't hearing back for a little bit. So I ended up looking at Woodward West and just seeing what they had available and started applying to that. And got a call back for like a zoom interview like pretty soon after that so that's right. where i ended up going um i think i got there like week seven or eight maybe right so flew drove like moved out of my friend's apartment drove back to vegas with all my stuff and then drove to woodward from there i think it's like five hours from vegas woodward west um right and I, I started off working as a, like the janitor out there. Really? Um, and the, or, yeah, or the housekeeping position, they called it, where I would like go through the cabins and stuff and clean them and just other stuff around camp. Um, so obviously not like the most enjoyable job, but it, right. it did have its benefits. I would start early in the morning and I'd typically be done around like one or two and then I have like the whole day to do whatever I want. And I wouldn't really be responsible for anything else. So I could just like skate anywhere and things like that. Pretty much just ball out, honestly. Um, yeah. And then, so Carson Miller, um, the you know Carson, right? Yeah, Carson's the man. Yeah, I know Carson. Dude. Because you showed guy. up, you, you must have been there the last week I was there. So that's what I think it was, because I remember um, seeing you, but then I think you left like pretty much when I got there or something. It was yeah. kind of that switch off, I think. I was supposed to be there till the end of the summer, but I like dislocated my ankle like the third day I was there. So like oh. I couldn't ride the whole time. Yeah. And yeah, that Man. sucked. So I just ended up being like, it's hard to be at Woodward and not ride. So exactly yeah kind of ended up being like carson i'm gonna leave <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude like, i hope I he's, understand dude i got it <laughs> told me he was starting yeah he told me he was starting physical therapy soon because he's going through his injury right now right so that's true hopefully he'll be able to he'll get back at it soon um but yeah i remember seeing you like in the hangar i think and you did like a you were like in crossfoot and then did like a bry flip on like one of the quarters or like that big vert quarter. Oh and I yeah, thought yeah, that was like so sick. Oh, I don't thanks. know. I was like, I've never. I don't know. And then I we might have talked a little bit, but then I think yeah, you 
went left after that. Yeah, I did. Um, um, it was like front 50 X ride yeah. and then Bry. So. Yeah, dude. I was like, what? Who is this guy? That's sick. Yeah, thanks, um, man. I like taking yeah, that over there. And then that was like there, the one time I was able to yeah. ride, to be honest. Okay. Got you. Wow. Were you there for the end crazy. of the summer so you then? Spent like, yeah, yeah. So I stayed the rest of the weeks. I think it was like four or five or something like that. Gotcha. Um, and I loved it. You know, it was literally because I always wanted to go to Woodward when I was like a kid, right? You see like yeah. the Woodward show and like all that stuff. And you're like, you know, I want to go there. Um, so I, I yeah. was never able to go there before until I was like, CJ was telling me about working there and I was like, well, this is my chance, you know? Yeah. I that was go, exactly I can how learn it worked to, for me. I can learn to backflip. Yeah. Yeah. You know? so <laughs> yeah I learned exactly. backflips that summer on my scooter. Yeah. Um, shout out Carson for that too. He was super helpful. He's really helpful with flips. Flip and things sure. like that. Dude. Yeah. He's so good. Um, so it was honestly just amazing. And then, and then he had me work some, stuff outside of housekeeping and like help out with the scooter program a little bit. Right. Um, which was tight because I was kind of like getting over housekeeping at that point. I was like, all right, this kind of, this kind of sucks. I'm it's tired of blows, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But either yeah, I, way I was at Woodward, right. And got to skate every day. So, you know, yeah, I guess that was where the disconnect was. Cause I, I saw you and then like, I thought that you would just be like in the instructor area and then you just weren't yeah. so then i like you just like disappeared i don't know yeah but so did you ever you did know. you end up instructing at all yeah a little bit so nice that was tight for sure and i still keep in touch with some of those campers now that were in yeah it's crazy stuff which is tight like yeah you just and even like other you know everyone else at Woodward that you work with like you really just become a family it's so sick yeah it's awesome the first time i was there uh back in 2019 um, that was probably my favorite time of being in Wood at Woodward. Just being like mm. 18, 19, 20 is like the perfect time to go. For sure. Because when I went back in yeah. 21, it was just like I was almost like over it a little bit because I was just I felt stuck there because we were working all but like gotcha. the weekends. And then this last summer, okay. they said that like they didn't they were like really short staffed and didn't get like any days off. So dang. That's crazy. So that yeah. was interesting. No, yeah, it was tight for sure. Because you know Taylin. Wait, what was the name? Taylin. Uh, what's it was his last name? Taylin. Shoot. Yeah, he's um, he's a scooter guy, but he um he basically just does maybe. woodward. That's like the, his full time job. He just transfers around to different woodwards all year. He's a snowboard instructor, and then he's like, oh wow, uh, goes to woodward west and then woodward east and then just does it all it's crazy but yeah he's just That's always tight. yeah like everybody knows who Taylor is and woodward and stuff so it's just interesting gotcha. um Dude. dang i gotta figure that out but kind Maybe of I uh do. i don't know but yeah how did uh because you, you're are you still in a wheelchair right now so yeah currently I'm in a wheelchair. That's why I'm, that's what I'm sitting on right now. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Yeah. Um, how did that happen? Like a year yeah. ago, right? Almost. I, I've so heard the story. November, like I've read the yeah. story, but yeah, I want to hear it. From okay. You. Gotcha. Um, so November of 2021, November 24th, uh, at this point I'm back home living in Vegas with my family. Um, Right, and we had a planned trip out to Maui uh, in Hawaii, and you know we're like Love super Maui. looking forward to this. Yeah, it's beautiful out there. Uh, I've been planning it forever. Got like super cheap flights and Airbnbs out there, and we're just gonna spend like I think five or six days. Um, and we were gonna skate out there too because there's some really cool skate parks out there. Uh, I can't remember the name of yeah. this one, but it's uh, like that was, but that's why I do a vacation is just skating somewhere else, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, same. Yeah. I just, yeah. Go somewhere else you and know, ride skate parks. You got to bring it, got to bring it with you everywhere. So yeah, November 23rd or 24th, we get in there and then November 25th, we decided to go surfing 
and try that out for right. the first time. Um, and actually, I wasn't like super down to surf, honestly. I was. It was your first like, time surfing. It was my first time, actually. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought that you would like totally had like been surfing before. No, I've done like wow. wake surfing and wakeboarding and stuff like in a lake behind a boat and things like that. Right. Um, and then have experience skateboarding, but never surfed. So, you know, I'm not like scared of the ocean or anything, but I just like didn't really want to that much. I was like, nah, I don't really. But then my, I'm not saying this is my mom's fault, but she kind of like pressured me into it. She's like, nah, you'll be fine. Just we're in Maui, well. go surfing. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, all right, yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. Um, yeah. Uh, might as well. So there's this uh, one guy that we found before the trip that did like surf lessons and stuff. That was like his business. So, yeah, you know, we meet up with him the morning of the 24th and he kind of just gives us, you know, basic instructions and stuff. And we paddle out. Um, and my brother and I were able to pick it up pretty quick, I think, just based on skateboarding and just like other stuff and having that kind of basic board control so we're out just kind of catching some little baby waves just having a good time and i think when it was like my third wave or something i went up off my stomach pushed up to my feet and i felt just like a lot of pain in my back and i wasn't sure what was going on i just thought i just didn't stretch that well maybe i'm just sore i was on a plane yesterday like I don't know. Um, did it just feel so like I you like pulled surfing. something or like, what did it feel like? It was, yeah, probably similar to like that type of pain. Um, but then as I kept and stayed out on the water, it started to feel like more of like a burning pain and sort of like a numbing tingly feeling like super, like nothing I've ever felt before. Right. So at this point, uh, it's like affecting me a little bit. Like, it's harder to move and things like that. And I'm just kind of like, just almost feeling stuck and right. I'm still surfing. Cause I'm like, I'm like, I'm fine, whatever. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're in this, um, we're in this community and we're just like, you feel pain and you're just like, if I ignore it long enough, it'll go away. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I can keep surfing. It's whatever. So at this point it's, it's like getting to the point where as I'm standing up, my legs are getting like shaky. And it's hard oh, to support yeah. a standing up. And then at this point, that's when I'm like kind of freaking out. I'm like, all right, I'm going to paddle back to shore, call it for the morning. Like I'm done. <laughs> I'm in too much pain. Right. And on the paddle back, like we were pretty far out. I'm not sure how far out, but it just felt like forever. And every paddle, you know, on my stomach is just like killing me. And I get right. to the sand. Um, and I'm just like stumbling around like losing my balance, all of this. And I kind of just like find some shade and bring the board with me up there and just like lay down. Um, And I'm just super confused. And then the rest of my... So it wasn't like a... It wasn't like a you fell or like something popped and then like you just like lost movement. It was just like slowly like over like what, 30 minutes? Pretty much, yeah. And then, so as I'm laying out on the sand, it's so weird. It's super crazy. My family kind of comes back, um, and the instructor, too. We're all just sort of confused. You know, I'm just trying to kind of stretch my legs out, things like that. And then I'm slowly, like, losing feeling. Like, when I touch my leg with my hand, like, there were some areas that, like, I couldn't feel. And then I started, like, losing movement and, like, muscle control. And right. that's when I'm starting to get kind of like actually scared, you know, because up until right. this point, yeah, I was like, I was like, maybe I just pinch something. I'll be OK in a couple hours. But now it's like I can't feel my legs. Like what? So yeah, you're getting like shaky, like almost like probably. Yeah. Oh, shit. Something's wrong. Yeah, I started yeah, a million things were just kind of going through my mind, but I was still trying to like stay calm on the outside. But you know, so we I still we still stay on the beach for like another like thirty minutes. Well, okay, we stay. So it starts to like this is like before everything goes like before everything just like dies. So and then as the thirty right. minutes go by, then I like try to get up and I can't. 
Um, and that's when my dad and brother kind of like put a head between each of my shoulders and just sort of like have to like drag me, like my feet are just dragging in the sand to the car. Um, yeah. And at this point I can't really get in the car by myself just because my legs aren't working like at all. So they kind of got to lift right. me in. Like I have, we have no idea how to like transfer me, you know? So I kind of end up just having to like crawl around the van and like get into a seat. Um, yeah. And so we just dropped my siblings off at the Airbnb. Like we really weren't in like that much of a rush. I don't know. We probably could have been a little bit more proactive about it, but, um, right. We dropped them off. And then we got to drive like 30 minutes to like the only hospital in Maui. And now this is where yeah. the pain is just getting like way more severe. Like I'm just like sweating, just, you know, and so much pain. Um, it was the longest 30 minutes ever, you know, every bump in the road, every like turn was just like sending jolts of pain, like throughout like my whole oh. body. Like I, I would just feel it like start from my like toes and then just like shoot up. It was super oh, bizarre. That's and yeah, kind of just like a burning, like electric pain. Super weird. Um, right. We get to the emergency room drop off and we just kind of tell them what's going on. Like, I'm going to need a wheelchair. I can't not don't have, you know, control of my legs right now. Um, and I try to tell the people that I like, I need help getting out of the car. And they kind of, I don't know, I guess maybe just the communication was sort of off. So they kind of like, I kind of just fall out of the car into the chair. <laughs> um, that oh, was no. pretty funny. I remember, I remember I, I laughed like a little bit about that. And then I was just back to like being in pain. But right. and I had to like wait outside the emergency room because there was like a line of people like trying to get checked in. So I'm just like sitting in a chair. Oh it's like the hottest day of the week out there go figure so right. you know i'm just like dying and at this point like my parents uh because i was 18 and like covid rules and everything they had to like send me in on my own like they wouldn't let them come through with me um and I oh my gosh that yeah. sucks so holy crap so you're in the er by yourself yeah in a wheelchair yeah like having no idea what's happening to me and yeah I don't have like my wallet on me, like no form of ID, like nothing. So like the check-in process just takes like way longer. Um, right. And then eventually I think they start kind of taking me a little bit more seriously and they're able to like get me in to like a room pretty quickly and start like doing some assessments and stuff and like asking what happened and everything. Um, and at this point, like, I don't really know what to tell them. Right. <laughs> Cause like nothing. Yeah nothing actually happened, you know? So that's yeah. Yeah. Super crazy. And what? as, as the day goes by, they are able to like come up with the diagnosis that I suffered a spinal cord injury, um, at mm -hmm. like the T11 vertebrae, which is sort of around like waist level. Um, I think, gotcha. or it might be, honestly, I don't even know. I probably should. Not but, like not too far above like your pelvis, probably. Okay. Right? Yeah, probably. Middle back. Maybe. I don't know. I'll, I'm gonna look it up later. Okay. So. And I'm looking yeah, like, at the later that back. day. Gotcha. So they're able to tell me that I suffered a spinal cord injury at the T11, and you know, and I'm paralyzed below the waist, um, which I already kind of figured because I wasn't, still wasn't moving at all at this point. Um. And yeah, they tell like me back. it's this condition, middle back. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. So T11. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and they tell me, yeah, spinal cord injury and it's called surfer's myelopathy, which basically means that I hyperextended my back, pushing up kind of from my stomach to my feet while surfing. Um, yeah hyperextended it and that ended up kind of cutting off blood flow to that t11 vertebrae and my spinal cord sort of like suffered a stroke just because the lack of blood flow um right and th that's kind of what caused me to like lose function over that course of like an hour hour and a half 
So at this point, I'm okay. just like, I'm just like confused, right? Because you think, because no, no actual damage to the spinal cord was done. Like I wasn't, the vertebrae wasn't smashed or anything. My cord wasn't severed. And they, they kind of tell That's... me that this, that this surface myelopathy doesn't really happen to people like that often at all. And that, right. you know, they can't like do anything, any surgery. Like it's just sort of like a time will tell type of thing. Um, right. And, you know, so I don't really know how to take like any of this information. I'm just like super confused. Uh, Cause they say this doesn't affect a lot of people. You know, I've read some stuff where it's like less than 200 people in the last 20 years or something like that. Um, but I also heard that this happens in like gymnastics and gymnastics and yoga sometimes just based on positions, but that it's like super rare. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So. Cause it's weird that like it cut off b blood flow and then it like wouldn't just like unkink that hose. And then you're like, yeah, okay. exactly. Like, that's what I'm so, finding weird is that it just stays like, closed yeah it still kind of confuses me to this day because it doesn't really make sense and nobody really knows you know um just because it's right. so rare and it doesn't really make sense so um fast forward we're like 10 months out from injury uh i've gained a little bit of muscle back in my legs so far like i can flex both of my quads so like you know when i flex kind of my thighs i can see those muscles contract right um and i can kind of wiggle my legs legs <laughs> i can yeah. wiggle my legs around a little bit but it's just wild man like it's crazy yeah how long did tell you like got any movement back at all so injured on the 24th i think i gained my first little like leg movement back on december 25th so on christmas actually um wow. christmas miracle i was like really yeah honestly <laughs> i remember i was just sitting in bed well at this point i was at a different hospital they i right. stayed in the maui hospital for two weeks uh, a couple of days in the icu unit out there and then what were they, they did, doing like, for, in the ICU for you? Uh, yeah, honestly, not that much. <laughs> yeah, I think just initially, um, just because it was like a spinal cord injury, they just had to make sure you were stable to do as much as they can. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But um, I was able to like, you know, get out of ICU pretty quick just because it wasn't. No, I don't know. No, like I didn't really need surgery or anything. So yeah. then I, well, and the, dude, the craziest part is that's this, that happened on like the first day of the vacation too. You know, I couldn't, that even, is, like, you know, that is the suck. That is so sucky. Like yeah. you couldn't even get the vacation in. No. Um, You're just like, funny I we see in the hospital wall in Maui for the entire trip. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, debated if we were going to surf at the beginning or the end of the trip and we went with beginning so right. i was kind of like looking back on it obviously you can't change it but like i just wish we surfed at the end so i would have had at least like time to skate and just enjoy the island you know right um but yeah but who we who's, are so who's like i'm gonna go surfing and i'm gonna be paralyzed <laughs> after this nobody thinks that so true You're like yeah true. surfing that sounds cool yeah yeah, exactly. That's so um, wild. Like I look, I, I saw when all that happened to you and it like really sobered me up. Cause I was like, you're like doing all the same stuff I'm doing. You're skating, scootering, doing flips like that. Was it the triple whip in the Denver street jam down the 10, the t uh, civic 10 or was that double whip? Yeah, I did. Uh, it was triple. That was, I double whipped it too to warm up and then kind of battle the triple out for a while. Um, I think, yeah, it's probably like my favorite. Yeah. I saw that clip so far. Just, yeah. Um, so no, that, that's the thing. Like you never know what can happen 
to you, right? Like you can't right. look into the future. So you got to make the, you got to make the most out of every day because tomorrow's never promised. Right. Um, exactly. Yeah. And like, I remember like I uploaded like a skate edit, like three days before my injury. Right. Like, you know, just who, who would have thought three days later, you know, can't skate. So. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. That's, that's, I really yeah. like hope this all blows over for you. And I think it will. Um, how, what are you doing for Thanks, like man. physical therapy? So they, so currently right now I'm doing like two, three days a week um, at two different places here in Vegas that offer kind of like no neuro recovery services. Um, right. So I kind of go and a big thing is like electrical stimulation to kind of, they kind of basically put pads over my leg muscle groups and right. shock them. So the muscles can contract and ultimately get stronger is the goal, which I've definitely noticed improvements in. And I think that's a big reason as to why I've gained back what I currently have so far. Um, so that's something I do. I just do different sort of like workouts and stuff and um, some different machines that kind of stand me up and kind of move my legs for me. Uh, and I recently just got leg braces actually through this one physical therapist that I work with. And pretty much what they do is lock out both of my legs and pretty much make them stilts in a way. So gotcha. I'm able to kind of push myself up with a walker and just sort of stand. Um, it's kind of all about the technique, like keeping my hips forward. So I don't like let my butt drop down and like fall over. Um, but I am able to walk around a little bit with the braces, just sort of by like swinging my hips, kind of using those hip flexor muscles in a way. Right. Gotcha. Um, but the braces are doing like pretty much all the work. Like they're like without the braces, I wouldn't be able to just like stand up out of my chair at all. So, you know, that's, it's the first step, right? You gotta, right. Well, actually I learned how to crawl recently too, because I have like a little bit of leg movement and control. So I learned how to, you know, crawl around so on the floor. Crawl around. Um, so, yeah. So that's really the first step, right? You got to crawl before you can walk and stand exactly. and all that and run. So we're just taking it way back, starting over, I guess. I guess so. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> I mean, at least you're getting some movement. Like that's where it starts for sure. Definitely. There was one, I'm so grateful. There's one doctor that I heard of, um, does a lot of like breath technique and, um, mindset stuff. I don't remember what he was doing, but I know he's had like a bunch, like I forget. I'm trying, that's what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to find, he has a podcast or a show or something. And I'm trying to find it. Um, but he's had like a lot of luck with, um, spinal cord stuff. So gotcha. that's what yeah, I was going to try to see. If you ever find him, let me know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, what has been like the hardest part of your last like year journey? Hardest part. Uh, shoot, there's like so many, you know, it's kind of hard to just pick one because paralysis right. like really messes up, messes up a lot for you. You know, you got to right. learn how to do everything sort of in a different way. And I'm so grateful I have like upper um, limb or I don't know what I'm trying to say, upper body control. Like I'm, I'm not a quadriplegic and like I have full, I currently have full use of my hands and arms, which makes a big difference for transferring onto different surfaces um, and things like that. So I right. think just the hardest part was learning how to just like do everything again. Um, Cause they air ambulanced me from Maui to a rehab place in Denver that helps people after spinal cord injury, learn how to just sort of 
live life again and just get down, get everything down. So I think those two months that I spent there was, it yeah. was just, you know, super hard and definitely, and just kind of coming to terms with the reality of it, which I still kind of struggle with sometimes, you know, cause in some ways it almost just like, doesn't feel real. Right. Like, right. Well, you know, of course it doesn't. Thought. That's like a big, yeah. out of nowhere, just like change and like hit to the gut. Like, yeah, definitely. It's kind of like so, it's a nightmare crazy. scenario, but from what I've seen, you've stayed positive, which is very important and taking as many positives out of it as you can. And I think in a way it like makes you happy to be alive. For sure. Yeah, it definitely does. Cause you know, with my situation, I definitely had control of it. Like while surfing, like, I don't know if it would have been like a life or death thing, but it could have, right. Like if right. I stayed out longer on the water where I totally lost leg function, Gotcha. On the other side, I found so, who I was looking for, and it's Dr. Joe Dispenza. Gotcha, Joe Dispenza. Here, I will... Yeah, I'll have to look him up or something. Uh, yes. He's an author and stuff. I had one of my friends' moms, um, like send me on his stuff and he's like a neuroscientist and stuff, but I will just send you over his profile real quick. Heck yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Cause information is power for sure. So definitely. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's crazy. Just like all the different things you learn going through an injury like this. Cause before my injury, I didn't really know anything about spinal cord stuff or like anything like that but you just learn right. so much and it's it's crazy you know it's a whole different world yeah for sure so yeah well you and your brother ride a lot don't you like you're still like going to the skate park and stuff with him i see which is sick yeah no i'm trying to um you're familiar with aaron wheels right aaron fathering of course the yeah. yeah the guy that does the wheelchair stunts and everything um with like nitro yeah. circus like that stuff's insane so yeah it's not it's crazy because he actually he lives like a mile and a half away from me right um so me and him or him and i before my injury actually i taught one of his younger cousins how to scooter so that's kind of when i first met him um, really but we didn't really like, yeah, form too much of a relationship there just cause he's like super busy, right? Traveling, going everywhere, doing all these crazy stunts. Right. Um, and then I get injured and that cousin that I taught to Scooter is like, you know, telling him everything that's going on and things like that. And, uh, Aaron and I have now kind of become friends and he's really trying to get me like my own custom skate chair uh right that's like all welded together and stuff and like way stronger than you know the wheelchair i use right now um so i can still get back to the skate park and you know try to get yeah, back hell, to might it as just well, in a different way yeah, which might as well learn a new thing with yeah, wheels on it, right <laughs> exactly i mean that's, that's if pretty you're much forced to be is, on it right? you might as well just, get good uh, at it exactly so <laughs> You know, I, I currently have a skate chair that was like donated to me through, um, this one place that like makes the skate chairs. So right. I've been using that for a little bit, but it's like way too big on me. Like when I sit in it, um, on the side, I have like three inches of space, like on each side, like oh, it's just so like it's huge, not like right? Fitted. Not really fit to me the best. Yeah. It's sort of hard to use. And it's actually not even really like a skate chair because it doesn't have like the special little, the, the WCMX wheelchairs have like this grind plate in the back that you can like, you know, hit rails and ledges on. Right. Whereas this one just has like the actual axle that like both the wheels hold on to that I really shouldn't grind on, you know? Right. Um, but you're going to anyway, I suppose. 
Yeah, no, I have. So, <laughs> um, uh, but I recently. What, what happens when you break your wheelchair at the skate park? Dude, wow. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess someone's just got to like carry me home, honestly. <laughs> you got to have your spare wheelchair in the car. Yeah, no, it's like somebody's going to get it for you. Yeah, because like a wheelchair is my legs right now, you know? So, like, not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or breaking one, that'd be awful. But Because uh, I saw that, like, Aaron's wheelchair has, like, one, it has the handles on the side that they just added, and then it also has, like, mm. a BMX, or not a BMX, a mountain bike shock, like a rear shock in okay. the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. That and would then be nice. they actually use the, uh, the front two small little wheels. Like, you have the big two wheels on the sides. But the right. two ones in the front of a wheelchair for the skate chairs, uh, they use like just like skate wheels and stuff, just like bigger. I, I didn't know if it was skate. Stuff, which skate wheel? Are they, they are? Yeah, they are like bigger skate wheels. Like yeah, like almost like, like cruiser size. Wheels, right? They're not even. They're like yeah, something more like that. But um, because I th- I thought they were so like sick. decently big. Like they're not a skate wheel size. Yeah. They're like, no, yeah, okay. Oh, I guess they're definitely not a skateboard. 80 millimeter or something, probably? Yeah, I mean, you can really... It's kind of personal preference, too, which is cool, because I've seen people with, like, all different types of sizes on there. So, right. you know, I don't how really much know how do much those, of a difference it makes, just because... How much do those run? So, yeah, the WCMX shares, they can go for, like, six, 7,000. Oh, jeez, um, yeah. So they're kind of up there. So I recently applied for some grants through like nonprofit organizations that help supply sports equipment to people who have suffered a spinal cord injury. Um, And I got the two I applied for both got accepted and they're actually able to cover the chair for me, which really I'm like so grateful. Yeah. Which I'm like, you know, it's freaking amazing because I don't think I'll really have to pay much of anything, you know, to That's awesome. get it. I just got to work with the company and design it, which Aaron is actually going to help me out with just because this is all new to me. It's my first chair. I don't really know if anything, you know, he, he knows everything, right. Cause he kind of pioneered yeah. all this stuff. And like, without a doubt, he's, you know, the best in the world at what he does doing some of the, I don't, did you see recently he did like a double backflip 360? 360 nuts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like yeah, I've been watching all know, of Ryan's vlogs insane. and yeah, that, yeah, I saw that. I, and I, was yeah, like, I watched that one too. Bro. Like nobody's like, nobody can do that on like anything else. Really? Like yeah, a very yeah, select few no, amount of people he's... can rotate that trick on anything. Yeah let alone a freaking wheelchair. Like, so I, you know, will I ever get to that level? If I got Aaron teaching me, who knows? Right. But I I do want to flip again. I really want to flip again. Yeah. I was about to say, when's Um, the wheelchair backflip coming in? Yeah. So Aaron, Aaron and I were actually just at the Woodward park city. The one that was just built recently. Um, cause he was throwing like a little wheelchair jam and sort of clinic out there. So we drove out, um, like six, seven hours from Vegas and yeah, I, I'm still like using that borrowed kind of skate chair thing. So I'm wasn't able to quite do a whole lot. There's actually like not even a seatbelt in it either. And there's not really a way to attach oh, yeah, it there's... just based on the way. So I don't you know need if to be like... actually fell out of it. Yeah. <laughs> you have yeah. to be like absolutely um, locked into those things. For sure, because, you know, without, like, leg function, you can't really, like, bail safely, you know? Uh-uh. You kind of just, you just Flop. fall, right? Like, that's how it is. So you got to be protected as best you can. So, uh, last, so during that weekend, um, I didn't, I didn't want to hit the, the foam pit or anything or the airbag there just because, like, if I don't have a seatbelt in, you know, I could just get like launched from the chair and either land back on it or like the chair lands on me somehow, you know? Right. So I was like not down to try to send that, but 
Aaron told me, he's like, when you get your skate chair figured out and it's designed and everything, um, we're going to go back to Park City and we're going to get you to hit the foam pit. And I yeah. was like, you know, it's got to happen. I got to flip again. So, yeah, of course. I'll, I'll try. I'll try for you. I got it. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait to see that. How do you get those? Do you get those wheelchairs like fitted? Do you have to go somewhere to get it like fitted? Or you just like so give them I your pant Aaron's, size? He's going <laughs> to... <laughs> um, I mean, shoot. Yeah, I got to kind of look at the order form, but it's it's got to be like super specific, like all the mes- measurements and everything, because it's got to, you know, kind of fit you perfectly. So I think yeah, Aaron is going to be able to help kind of measure me and stuff, just get that done. So I think we might try to do that either, I think, sometime next week, maybe. Um, Sweet. But I'm, I'm so grateful to have him, like, as a resource, you know, a mile and a half down the road because like what are the odds of that too you that's know? really like, that's nice yeah insane. yeah um so it's awesome that he's know. just kind of taking you under his wing too definitely yeah super sick um at the same time though it is it's kind of it's pretty hard at the same time just to kind of like have a new set of wheels and like be a total beginner at the skate park you know and just like yeah. not after like skating for the last like six years or so and just like learning everything, but then definitely showing get, yeah, up. Yeah. I can't imagine. And like, it, to, yeah. It bummed me out a lot. I can't like, I'm sure there's it, lots of hard days. It, it definitely still gets to me, you know? So I think it would be crazy yeah, if it did definitely <laughs> seriously, but, but so that's something I still kind of deal with sometimes is, you know, going to the park and then just seeing my brother or like, you know, other friends or just people just kind of skate in the way that, you know, that I want to be skating for sure. Um, but you know, like I'm, I'm still getting leg, leg movement and strength. So I'm not saying that like, I'll never skate again. Right. Well, of course we just not. like, don't know for sure. Yeah. Like it's just sort of up in the air right now. Um, no, but it's just it would crazy, be, you know, about spinal it'd be cord sick injury. to, uh, yeah. after all of it, pick up a, pick up a scooter again, go flip your scooter and then be like, Oh, watch this, grab a wheelchair and go <laughs> flip that too. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Just become, you know, good at every wheeled skate park sport. Honestly, that'd be insane. Exactly. So there's your yeah. diversity right there. Yeah. But to be fair, that'd your be skate style is one of the best I've seen. I'm not going to lie. I really Thanks, like man. your skate clips. I appreciate it. I, yeah. Uh, I always like, yeah, I tried to, tried to get my clips as clean as I could for sure. Um, because I just, I just like loved filming like clips all the time, you know, just like random yeah. story. Like that's just what you do as like a skater, right? You just like film everything, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah no but dude i love your clips too like the recently the reel you just posted on the scooter where you did like the bar spin to like t-wog but you caught it at the same time yeah right like i have like never seen that yeah well i was trying to do like t-bog and then like do the throw bar with the one hand but i just ended up throwing it at the same time and then catching them together i don't know it worked out i thought yeah i was stoked on it and i'm just trying to literally i watched start at the flip (laughs) Yeah, I watched it like 10 times earlier because that's when I saw it. I was like, wait, 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 what did he do? And was like trying to zoom in and just like see <laughs> yeah. how it all worked. Um, and I, I appreciate thought it was so that. Sick. Yeah, and then, then he well, just like you. did a backflip bar spin after that. And I was like, all right, <laughs> he's just yeah. a little different. Well, yeah, I'm trying to get the flip combos that scare me so much. Flips that's are so sick. like, so in the head. It's oh like, for sure lots of people can do like flip whips but can't do flip bars and i'm completely the opposite i'll throw my hands wow. around easy but taking my feet yeah. off is scary because I, I never tried either i just learned how to uh straight back flip um right and i got it out of coping too but that was like my main goal was like learn landing it to resi is one thing but like taking it to concrete is like another and it is totally mental because the flip in itself isn't like super hard it's just being able to commit and tell yourself that you can do it and you just got to get over you know 
tell yourself that um, you're like for me it's like just being able to know that i can bail safely if something goes wrong that's where my confidence yeah. comes from which yeah, is definitely. where that's, things like yeah wheelchair and like rollerblades <laughs> don't make any sense to me yeah because there's like sure. all the bailing no, is just there isn't any mm-hmm. yeah so um definitely and i think before i learned how to backflip i was already like super comfortable on like a trampoline doing flips and stuff which i think yeah. helped me a lot just to sort of like get that spatial air awareness um right because you yeah, could do like, like standing like backflips back too trampoline yeah yeah that was a big thing so i already kind of understood how flips work which i think is super important for anyone that's like trying to learn how to flip like it's not totally right. necessary but it definitely helps did you do gymnastics as a so, kid? No. Um, just sort of like, talk. I was super into parkour when I was a kid, actually, you know? So gotcha. I was like yep. always trying to, yeah, move and like learn all that stuff. I just thought it was so sick. I feel like there are a so, lot of kids that are either in gymnastics or you get into like some sort of parkour or like trampolines or something. Like that's where all the like air awareness comes from. But, yeah, definitely. So hopefully that skill. can translate. Hopefully, it can translate to the wheelchair a little bit. I don't know, but I think that's that's there's gonna a lot be a scary more that you one. don't see. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot more that you don't see when it comes to backflips. Like, it's not there's like the thing in your ear, like the little like orientation thing that does a lot of knowing where you're at. But For sure. so, what yeah. like have you picked up anything new since since the accident? Like, have you had like any you got into reading or art or anything else that you didn't that you wouldn't have otherwise so currently that's something that i'm really trying to sort of figure out um just because action sports were like what i spent you know pretty much all okay <laughs> my bad Do you like- this this happens like almost every podcast but it all like works out like i can edit it all so Okay, that's what I was about to ask. Like, yeah, do you like edit it or anything? Because I was like, dude, I feel so bad. My computer's been bugging. Uh, no, yeah, I just cut okay. it. I cut a lot of it out. It, like, not like stuff gotcha. that we talk about, but like the in between sections. Okay. Like, if you dip out, like, because it happens. Yeah. Wi Fi's not reliable, or equipment's not reliable. So, For sure. no, it's pretty easy. Gotcha. But yeah, on new hobbies, what are you thinking? So. That's definitely been, if anything, that's probably one of the hardest things that's been, that I've been dealing with more recently, just because action sports is what I spent so much time on. Mm -hmm. And when I wasn't like skating or anything, I was, I've been playing like drums for like six years as well, primarily like the drum kit. And for that, you use your feet, your bass drum and hi-hat pedals. So without having like, you know foot function right now those two things that were just sort of just kind of taken from me ever since you know that day it's been really hard to try to like branch out and like learn new things um but i am i'm just trying to like read more honestly spend less time on my phone uh maybe get into some art stuff but it's just hard trying to you know get into something after like trying to find a new lifestyle hobbies yeah, we're just yeah find that new passion at the moment. Seriously, I, yeah. So. For, for me, it's uh this thing right here. Ah, uh, the guitar. I love yeah. I love guitar. Um, I do guitar, piano, all the music stuff. I was like big choir kid in high school. So um, that's sick. My dad's in band. My sister's yeah. in band. Music is dude. Sick. What? Yeah. No way. That's so cool. So lots of music in the family. Yeah. Lots of music. Um, Definitely. Wow. But those are things that you definitely have time now to pick up. So just, there's actually, you know that um, there's a scooter kid that Sam used to ride with. He now has like that huge TikTok song, but he became like a music artist. And Sam's like, oh, I know that kid. I used to like go to the skate park with him. And I was like, that's crazy. That's wild. They just come out of nowhere. Wow. Axton Jones? For real. 
Okay. But huh. yeah, no, it's um, like it's you're almost forced to try new things right now, which in the long run might be honestly yeah. really nice. Seriously, definitely. Um, so both of my younger siblings actually play play guitar and things like that. My brother is like super into it. Um, yeah. And I've definitely like tried to kind of pick it up a little. Well, all of his stuff is like lefty as well. He plays lefty, and I'm <laughs> that's weird. You know, <laughs> not left-handed. So <laughs> yeah, that's hard to find um, lefty guitars. That's yeah interesting yeah so he's constantly having to yep so um yeah i might maybe i'll just like try to pick up like ukulele or something like that um yeah i don't know just something but definitely it's kind of hard to just kind of like try to learn a new instrument after playing you know drums and percussion stuff for so long right but um that also makes me grateful to have upper body function with my arms and hands because then when my legs do kind of come back on or I can start to maybe move them a little bit more then you know I'll be able to kind of do drum stuff easier if that makes sense like I'll be able to right just because my hands are already like the same as they were before yeah so you know and I'm getting kind of close like I can pick up my right leg um sometimes like a couple inches off the ground uh so that's kind of all you need right just to pick it up a little bit and just like <laughs> let slam it, it on the bass yeah, drum exactly. pedal <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so that that would be the issue would be like having the uh muscle stamina to actually like do that a lot like it's just not there yet right but, you know hopefully in the next couple months that picks up just because I, I miss it so much dude like yeah i was always drumming and stuff and i was on like I was like kind of falling in love with it all over again, like right before my injury. So that's why it was kind of hard to like, you know, kind of get it taken after just starting to like really dive back into it after kind of taking a break for like a year, sort of. Right. But you know, that, that just kind of gives me the motivation to, you know, get back to it when I can. So we'll get straight, for sure. straight drum kit action. I am terrible at drums. I like, that is one of those things I've tried. (laughs) I've tried so many times. We have a drum kit sitting in our basement, but I just cannot figure it Uh, out. Dang. I got, yeah. Some of my old kit stuff behind me. You can sort of see. Oh yeah. Random stuff. It's all kind of scattered around the room, but gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So what have you been uh, reading lately? Reading. Um, well, I really haven't. I have books that I literally have that I've gotten recently that I just like can't discipline myself to like take some time and even just read like a couple pages a day. Uh, but I just got this one by another spinal cord injury um, survivor who lives up in Minnesota, and it's just sort of like his story and you know which I would love to read. So honestly. I'm going to do that after we finish this up. Cause you know, I keep saying I will, but I never do. Right. So that's something I'm definitely going to try to read and finish up soon. Um, I've also recently kind of picked up my old community college classes. I was taken before my injury. Oh, so nice. Sort Good of for just you. like re- reading stuff for that. Uh, but I'm already behind. <laughs> it's all online that. right now. So it's kind of hard to, you know, find the motivation to be at home and get stuff done. But right. Yeah. I also can't drive right now. So I can't just like go to a library either unless I get, you know, a ride there or something. Oh, that's that. Um, That would be a frustrating, that would be frustrating. Now thinking about it, that's, that's something I struggle with too, for sure. Is just being kind of stuck, you know, like not being able to drive. Well, technically hand controls are a thing that people with disabilities can use in order to operate a vehicle. Um, Is there another license? I didn't know these were like a thing before. So yeah, you kind of, yeah, you gotta like take a test again. Um, And there's all different types of hand controls and it kind of just depends on like your level of function and things like that for each person. 
But at the rehab hospital in Denver, I went to, they had me try out hand controls and figure out which ones I liked the most. And I got to actually like do drives out there and take the driving test and things like that. Um, but since I live in Nevada now, the test won't like, I got to take the test again here, but I can't gotcha. take the test until I get hand controls. And they're like kind of expensive. So. Right. Of course. Cause uh, I saw that. Yeah. Like, we have, I haven't. Yeah. Aaron has the, um, it's almost like a four wheeler, isn't it? Like, it's like you have your hand on the wheel and then you have another one here that you have gas and then you have like brake, right. Or something like that. Uh, I haven't seen his personally that he adapted his truck with, um, but which one did, which ones did you use? So the ones that I ended up liking was pretty much you got the steering wheel right here and then kind of on the left side right below it, this sort of um, rod comes out and it's got like a lever attached to it. And pretty much what that does is when you push forward, that's how you break. And then when you sort of turn your hand like down, like your hand is flat and you just sort of turn it down, that's how you accelerate. Gotcha. Um, and for a while, like, it kind of stumped me out. I was like, I would thought, it, you know, gas would be like pushing forward. I don't know. I just thought that made sense. But the instructor right. told me that they don't make them like that. Because imagine you get in an accident, someone hits you from behind and your body goes forward. So that yeah. means your hand goes forward and you just hit the gas, you know, into the car in front of you. Right. Um, so, you know, I guess that makes more sense. And then sort of for steering, because... Let's say you're making a turn, you have your left hand on that rod with the gas and brake, you know, your right hand has to turn the wheel, but it might not be able to do all that one handed. So kind of what they do is they kind of get like a doorknob thing and they attach it to the steering wheel. And that's sort of you what you do, this. On do. And that gives you like full control of the wheel, if that makes sense. Like the bus driver so just kind of crank it out. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. So, um, those are pretty sick, you know, because when I was first injured, I thought I'd like never drive again. You know, I was like, well, right. (laughs) You know, legs don't work. I had no idea that those were an option. Sweet. Well, I think we pretty much hit our hour mark. I have, um, one more question for you before we end. Kind of like, What would you give as like inspiration or what would you tell? Actually, let's go this direction. What would you tell like younger you if you were to meet like yourself again, like say like when you were 16 or when you were 15, like what would you tell yourself? Oh, dude, that is deep. Okay. Um, Yeah. end on something that makes you think. Okay. Let's see. So there's this quote that I recently came across um, that's been hitting really hard for me. And it's whatever card you're dealt in life, you can always make a move. Um, And I just think that can be, you know, taken as me right now. I've been given this card, you know, paralysis, spinal cord injury. It's right. not a card I like, you know, for sure. But I can still make a move to, you know, try to progress as much as I can to still get up every day and put in the work in physical therapy. And even just getting through a day in itself can be challenging. But it's up to me to make that move to push myself forward. Um, so I think that's what I'd tell my younger self is, you know, you're, you'll always be able to make that move, right? Life, right? Life is sort of you're. It's a book, right? You're the author of your own story. You know, life's literally a choose your own adventure book. That's what it is. So yeah. it's up to you to make those choices and moves to get what you want. So, well, yeah, piggybacking off that a little bit, it's like there is a lot of like a lot of life happens to you. Like there is a lot that you can control, 
but there's a lot that mo- even more that you can't control and it takes something crazy to happen to show you that to like really like oh there's a lot i can only like control how i react to the situation not necessarily how the situation is and i think you're a great inspiration on that and like i definitely look up to your attitude a lot as far as like how you've like made so much progress and how you're working and how you're like just yeah your whole demeanor about the situation is super inspiring to me and i know to a lot of people as well so i just like yeah i really appreciate what you're doing man dude thank you that means a lot seriously and i'm sure like i know it can be hard like i know that it's definitely hard but like you are here now so you can only control what's in front of you definitely yeah so just keep pushing that's super true but uh thank you so much again matt for coming on and where can like people find you like what is your instagram what are your socials thanks for having me this has been super sick um first podcast i loved it bro thank you yeah it was such such a good job with these i love i love listening to them oh thank you Um, so much so on instagram uh it's just my name Matt, M-A-T-T, underscore, and then my last name, E-T-Z-E-L-L, Matt, underscore, Etzel. Yeah. Um, and that's the only social media I'm really active on. I might try to blow up on TikTok. I don't know. You, know? you should. You could. <laughs> I'll there you try. Go. Uh, yeah. yeah. Watch so. out for Matt, Matt's uh, TikTok. <laughs> Next big thing. Uh Actually, I don't even know my TikTok handle. I think it's, I'm sure if you search up Matt Etzel, it's probably something like that. It, it, might, it might, honestly might be the same as my Instagram. I don't really go on TikTok that much, so I don't know. But Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you again. And for everybody that's listening, thank you for tuning in and making it this far. I appreciate every one of you and every one of the listeners for this, that this podcast gets. I just... It's awesome that I have this platform and that I'm able to talk to cool people like Matt. Um, And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one and peace.